Most people think of lists as simply a way of displaying related items in a numbered or unordered listing. You know, that's certainly true, but lists can do so much more than that. Lists allow us to group related content together and then structure that content in a way that denotes importance, rank, or similarity. When used for navigation, lists offer a way to group links together so that user agents know that all of those links are related. XHTML offers us three main types of lists ordered, unordered, and definition lists. Ordered lists use some type of numbering system, numbers, letters, or Roman numerals, to display listed items. Unordered lists use bullets or icons to denote a listed item, and definition lists basically display a term followed by a definition. While ordered lists and unordered lists follow the same basic structure, definition lists use a slightly different structure. And here we have an example of an ordered list and a definition list. If I look over here in the code view of this, my ordered list opens with an OL tag. Each item in the list is then surrounded by a list item tag. And then when the list is over, the ordered list closes out. Unordered lists look exactly the same. They just use a UL instead of an OL tag. The definition list is a little different. Notice that a definition list opens up by using the DL tag. Thereafter, we have a DT that denotes a term, and we have a DD that denotes a definition. In terms of rendering, the default rendering for most definition lists is that the definition is indented. Then, after the definition list is over, notice we have a closing DL tag. Now that we understand a little bit more about the structure of lists, let's take a look at creating a list and then modifying list properties for our Groundswell site using Dreamweaver. So I'll close the list example file, and I'm gonna open up the index start page from the 0503 folder. I might expand my palettes out a little bit just in case I need one. If I scroll down my page a little bit, I can see that the third line down says, on your site you'll find, and then it looks like it has a listing of the things that I'm probably gonna find on that site. Well, this is a perfect candidate for a list. So I'm gonna start by highlighting the first item, the latest gear, and highlighting all the way down to the last one, which is and much more. With those selected, I'm gonna go down to my properties inspector. I'll make sure I'm looking at the HTML properties by clicking on that tab. And I can see that I have icons for both the unordered and the ordered list. So I'm gonna go ahead and click ordered list. And just like that, all of those individual paragraphs become an ordered list. You might be wondering, well, what about definition lists? I don't see an icon for that. Well, there isn't one. If you need a definition list, you'll have to go up to the menu, you'll go to Format, List, and there's Definition List. So you can find it, it's just not right on the Properties Inspector like the other two are. I mentioned that we can modify our list once we've created them, so I'm gonna click somewhere inside this list, and if I look down at the Properties Inspector, there's a little icon down here that says List Item. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and I can see that I'm using a numbered list right now and I can change its style. So well, let's do that Roman numeral small. Now I could also change the individual list item by using the smaller drop-down menu below this. I'll go ahead and click okay. And now instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm seeing lowercase Roman numerals for that. As I mentioned earlier, there really isn't much difference between an unordered list and an ordered list. So I'm gonna switch over to code view and check that out. I'm gonna highlight all the text. This is a really good idea before switching over to code view. Let's switch over to code view. So what that'll do for you is it'll jump to that spot in the code and the code will be highlighted. That makes it really easy to figure out exactly where you are within your code. Here we have our ordered list tag, our OL tag right there. Notice that it does have a type attribute and that's the change we made to it. So I'm gonna get rid of the type attribute. Then I'll change OL to UL. And then I've gotta also remember to change the closing tag. So change the closing tag to a UL tag as well. Now switching back into design view, now we have bullets instead of numbers. Of course, it would have been just as easy for me to highlight the text, go down to the Properties Inspector, and choose either one of these icons. That'll swap it back and forth as well. But I wanted you to see within the code how simple that structure actually is and how easy it is for you to change. What about nested lists? They're just as easy to create. So let's say I'm gonna click right after the latest gear, hit return, and I'm gonna type in cool ways to keep up with the surfing lifestyle. Underneath that, I've got surfing journals, surfing photos, competition videos, and surf condition reports. Those are all ways that I can keep up with the surfing lifestyle. So I'm gonna highlight all four of those, then go down to my properties inspector and click on the text indent icon. That immediately makes those a nested list. 
Now, remember, we really are doing stuff in code. So I'm going to go to my split screen view. And let's figure out exactly what happened here. So if I'm looking at this in split screen view, let me expand this over a little bit so we can see a little bit more of our code. Notice that we have a brand new unordered list, but look at its location. It's nested inside the list item tag, not outside of it. So if you're ever creating one of these through code, remember that nested lists need to be inside the affected list item. If not, there's going to be an error because the browsers are going to think that you opened up one unordered list and then tried to start another one without first closing it. So remember, nested lists are nested inside that list item. If you're not doing a whole lot of hand coding, however, you don't have to worry about that because Dreamweaver will take care of that for you. To move these back to their root level, I can select them, click the outdent, and then I can even get rid of this list item that I no longer need. Creating and editing lists inside of Dreamweaver is very simple, and it's similar to using several popular text editing programs. What's important to remember, however, is that any change made to the list, and all of the text in Dreamweaver for that matter, is in reality generating and modifying code, the underlying structure for all your content. As such, you want to make sure that you understand how this code should be structured in case you ever need to go in and modify it yourself.